All right, guys, welcome to another Source Gaming discussion. Uh, I'm Article Lead Spazzy D. I'll be taking us through this. Uh, with me today is uh, one of our writers, uh, Wolfman. Say hi, Wolfman. Hello. Happy to be here again. Fantastic. And today we're going to talk about Nintendo theme parks. Recently, Nintendo released a short video um, talking a little bit more about what to expect, I guess, from their partnership with Universal. Really, nothing was revealed. You saw that Mario would be in it, which is a big shock. And then you saw, you know, some more Mario backgrounds. Yeah, exactly. You didn't see anything from something that was not Mario. And I mean, there's some rumors going around. There's, you know, um, people's reactions on it, things like that. I think what we want to do, though, is just for fun, kind of go into what we would like to see. Yeah. Um, or, you know, yeah, kind of like wildest dreams, like what would be cool in a Nintendo theme park? Yeah, I guess we could start with more realistic stuff and move to the more outlandish ones. Right. And move to my Xenoblade experience. I got it. Oh, so. I'm <laughs> looking forward to that. I did not actually include that one. Um, so uh, obviously Mario is the big one. Uh, it's the obvious one. I think you could basically make like half of the stage or half of the theme area is Mario related and there wouldn't be a problem. I, I don't necessarily think it should be that quite that large, but Mario is a huge property and not just on a commercial level, but on an iconographic one. Like he is for a huge amount of the population, the actual face of what video games are and can be. Uh, because of that and because of his, place is not only just a platform icon, but this multifaceted commercial figure who has sub-series within sub-series and all sorts of genres, you could conceivably have even just a Mario theme park that was entire filled with entirely dramatically unique things. Right, especially when I think when you consider all of the kind of Mario sub-genres and sub subsets, you've got, you know, your Mario Karts and not not even to consider related franchises. But, I mean uh, a Mario Kart like bumper car seems unbelievably obvious. Yeah. A Paper Mario thing, it wouldn't be like, you know, a super crazy fast ride, but you could go through this like area where everything was part of this construct like very visibly constructed world with like paper and cardboard objects kind of floating in and moving up like this giant puzzle box. Right. I've you know, I always thought um you know the the log flume style rides like in a universe you have the um, Dudley Deal right rips off uh, falls and you have Splash Mountain of course yeah um, I always thought that you could do a Mario ride uh, version of that sort of ride Ooh, yeah. where you're going around in little like uh, half pipes <laughs> and you're going through kind of uh, what was it World 7 and Super Mario Brothers 3 where everything is pipe based and dark and uh, you're kind of going through the sewers and you, you have the big fall at the end. I, I just felt like even that sort of ride, I think would fit perfectly with Mario. I thought that would be uh, one option. No, I think that's a fantastic idea. Um, you know what else? Super Mario 64. And uh, that's literally that whole game was basically designed as what Miyamoto called a garden where Mario would basically just kind of move around and allow you to experiment. Like that whole area outside the castle is almost a representation of what Mario 64 is. And so like, having this kind of space where there are these blocks and some like slow moving Goombas and pipes, like, like it's an obvious thing and maybe it's not super exciting, but it's literally the space you could kind of explore. Right. Well, most theme parks have those areas, especially kids areas where it's kind of a play area where it's a themed area, um, which Mario fits perfectly. I think a 3d world one, like a 64 meets 3D world one would probably work really nicely. Right. Um, not not to get too off track because we will come right back to Mario and I'm sure we want to talk about this franchise a little bit more. Um, but when I think of that sort of area, the the kind of, you know, Mickey's Toontown, like uh, um, Kids Zone at Universal, that sort of like, hey, it's an interactive area. You can go around and do Kirby. stuff. I think Animal Crossing. No, I think Animal Crossing because you have all the villagers and the house and stuff. Kirby, Kirby is clearly... Yeah, no, we'll actually, you're right. totally right. Animal Crossing <laughs> is... Even more than Mario, perfect for that. Um, I mean, going to different houses. In fact, this would be like super exorbitant, and I can't imagine anyone w- being willing to do that. But you could even have the like you could literally have the the actual towns change a little bit each day. Like each day that the rides open, <laughs> you could have the houses moved into different areas, and like it would just be like Animal Crossing, where the pieces aren't right. Different villagers that different but they're still there. You could have like 
So, like, you'd have some static guests like Tom Nook or, like, Mr. Rossetti or whoever, but then you'd also have, like, your, like, favorite crocodile Animal Crossing villager or your favorite sheep villager or your favorite bird villager. Right, and you could actually have it set up so you'd still have the kind of downtown city area where you'd have, you know, Brewster's. You could actually go get a coffee there or you could go, they'd have shows with K.K. Slider and things like that, so. A, a Brewster Cafe... Like, if they're not planning that, like, they should absolutely plan that. We, we might need to go uh, start a petition somewhere, send it to Nintendo. I don't know. They must have a cafe of some sort in their building, and I hope it's based on <laughs> Brewster's. Um, <laughs> you know, when we're talking about, like, these kind of small, not necessarily just kids areas, but, like, more easy to move in areas. Um, another one, albeit a little bit crazy or a little bit slightly darker, Pikmin. Pikmin would be cool. Pikmin, I could see a big interactive area, go around, um, you know. I, yeah, because it, it lends itself to that, too. Yeah, like Gulliver's Agreed. Travels, Fantastic Planet movies, like, those are so great. They're so exciting to imagine yourself in this, like, where the world itself is so much bigger. And I think even having, like, where you see this giant thing and it turns out it's just a flower or whatever. Like, I think that would be really fun. It's funny you bring that up because in Universal, uh, in Orlando, they have an area that's modeled uh, after Fievel goes west. So it has some of those aspects to it already, where it's a giant, you know, can or a giant, I don't know, mushroom or something. It's I'm not too familiar with the area anymore, to be honest, but it, it kind of has that. And yeah, I, I think Pikmin would be a, a great fit for that. Sorry, continue. Oh yeah, no. Um, in fact, if you wanted to go crazier, you could even have little like robot Pikmin or whatever moving around. Yeah, that's interesting. And, you know, because this is going to be a theme park based off video games, I feel like you do have to have some level of interaction and interactivity absolutely so, but um we got a little bit off track we'll we'll come back to that let's let's go back to uh you had any more ideas on the mario franchise uh mario party is pretty big um i think that would probably make sense um i'm not sure how it'd work but you could definitely have some sort of like crazy you're in the game itself world not you're not getting you know chased around by giant like chain chomps that are slowly and with bad orthogonal 3d moving you around the set but you know you could definitely have this giant puzzle game that you are part of right i see that more as maybe um part of like an interactive area but not not so much like an outside play area like we were talking yeah. about before oh, but... no this is not an outside play area this would be like an actual ride right exactly well no i was like i can see it as kind of an indoor kind of um like i know epcot has a couple of things like this where you go around and you, you can kind of interact with um different things and you have kind of screens that you can interact with and actually become part of it and do things like that. I, I see that as maybe part of a larger Mario ride, really. Like maybe when you exit the ride, you get to mess around in the uh, Mario Party section. Yeah. Because I, I believe there was a rumor of like an actual full-fledged Mario Kart ride, which wouldn't be like a go-kart ride, which would probably be uh, a dark style ride where you'd go in and I, I don't know, you'd, you'd be tagging along, you know, maybe maybe actually on Mario's cart or something. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like Mario Kart makes sense for that big marquee ride, more than Mario Party? Well, no, no. Mario because Party it's a bigger franchise. Definitely not be like the fine, the big thing. My problem with the Mario Kart as just a normal ride is that like the thing that defines Mario Kart, at least to me, is, you know, the items. It's that sort of like very zany approach to to being a racing game. And I think that just having right. it be like just the defining roller coaster isn't really as exciting when you could potentially have like a ride where you're throwing shells and banana peels at everyone else, obviously in like a safe for version of this. Right. But I'm, there could be a combination of that though, where you're on a track uh, moving, but maybe you do have access to items. So the problem is if you look at something like, uh, like the men in black ride, like Buzz Lightyear, where you're shooting a, a pistol, that's, not as difficult because uh, the thing about Mario Kart is that you have different items and the items do different things. So even on a cart, I don't know how that would really work. Yeah. Like Mario Kart has potential, but it, it would have to be handled very, um, not carefully, it, but they, I, feel like I don't know. It would have, to, I mean, it could just be a generic ride, which is fine. There are plenty of different styles of roller coasters and rides that, you know, could fit. But I do think that, I think maybe we're both kind of getting at this point, which is that Mario Kart has something in it that's kind of special from other things that could be rides. And I think we'd like to see that hopefully like 
represented a bit more accurately and in a way that would also be good for just being its own gamey thing. Right. Right. Um, and I think, yeah, Mario in general could handle most type of rides because Mario himself has done everything, practically everything. Yeah. in every genre. So we could just, we could literally go through every type of theme park ride and say, well, I could see how Mario could do this and Mario could do that. And Mario. So, I mean, at the end of the day, we know there's going to be a Mario run. Yeah. We know Bowser's going to be in it. We know, we know Wart isn't going to be in it. And uh, <laughs> we'll move, we'll move on from there. Wart will be uh, saved for my smash brothers spec script which none of you will ever read oh man i yeah we're we're not gonna get on the subcon stuff because it i i've got i've got opinions on that anyways oh. um let's move um from mario to kind of series that are tangentially related or more than tangentially related well, in the case uh, of donkey Kong. i mean if we're talking rides like barrels and mine carts are both pretty easily acceptable right i don't know if donkey kong <laughs> is anything else that i feel would be that exciting <laughs> i'm sorry I, I i mean i'm sure like a jungle level would be neat but like to me that's like the most obvious a, a banana a banana smoothie stand in the middle of uh, the area i get it uh <laughs> well actually there is one other thing that could work yeah. Retro 8-bit Donkey Kong, like arcade style thing where you c- crawl. Up. Again, this is kind of dangerous, but like some very child friendly, safe area where you ascend a construction tower and dodge barrels in a way that um, is not at all hurtful, which I don't I, know how you make. Yeah. I, that's just a liability. Everything about that sounds awful. <laughs> but you, I mean, it sounds like it could be fun. It just sounds like it would be awful for them to try to implement. I think, as you were saying, that the two um, most logical things are you could do like um, barrels. You could do the, you know, kind of how they have the the river rapid rides where you're in a, a barrel going down yeah. that just kind of fits Donkey Kong. Or um, you could you could theme it more heavily, but you could have a minecart coaster. And that would be perfect. Yeah, I was pretty much thinking like that's those are basically it. I do think somewhere there should be like an old school Donkey Kong thing, but obviously not my idea. (laughs) But I don't think we're getting more than like one Donkey Kong ride. Right. But the thing you have to realize, too, is that remember that. okay, for instance, look at the Marvel area in uh, Universal Studios uh, Islands of Adventure. Yeah, sure. The rides are Hulk, Spider-Man, Doctor Doom and a little like kids storm ride. But you still see Captain America and the Avengers. Uh, there's an Avengers themed diner with Iron Man, Thor and Captain America. There's a place that does cotton candy that's silver uh, surfer themed. The arcade is Kingpin. So just because. Wait, is the arcade not arcade? It is not arcade. I know it's a missed opportunity. But, um, uh, you know, regardless, we have to realize is that characters and franchises, they may not get a full attraction, but you might have, uh, for instance, they have those Kirby cafes in Japan. They could literally just stick a Kirby cafe. Uh, I feel like, in, yeah, in we, this. I mentioned the, the idea of like a lighthearted Kirby area. And I do think uh, like some dreamland stuff would be fun, but like, yeah, a Kirby eats. There's a lot of Kirby food. Kirby himself is something that you could probably eat. Like, <laughs> uh, and hell, you could have like crappy Meta Knight, like forks. <laughs> um i mean have have you seen the any of the stuff from the kirby cafes from, i have uh, Japan? i did i uh watched that uh one a uh, super bunny hop video and i will say they do look kind of delicious <laughs> yeah right i mean I, I i wouldn't mind that um there's also uh like most of these um franchises there's a lot of potential in kirby to do all sorts of things you could set up a mini golf course for kirby because you know, Kirby's done golf. And you could have you like that for pink Mario golf balls that have Kirby's face on them. Right. I, I, I kind of feel like if you when you have a games area, there's a lot of stuff you can do with Kirby, too. But uh, I'll, I'll uh, get to that a little bit later. Um, I mean, as far as rides, I don't know. Um, F-Zero. I mean, I know it's not big and in all likelihood, it will probably be pushed aside for a Mario Kart and Donkey Kong ride, which I think makes sense. But like if you want to have like your super, super fast coaster that works it's extreme you have a dude who looks like a jacked up superhero who's got like a bird made of flame as his sig- si- like his logo and there you go you know uh as far as coasters go i think Star Fox. okay yeah that probably makes more sense actually yeah because you'd have um maybe uh some sort of monitor in front of you you'd have the different people talking to you you'd have peppy talk to you 
I mean, you could also do a full full uh, simulator ride with this too. Well, yeah, um, that's basically the thing a about, Star Fox game. Like, you could literally just have it be like you shoot down the enemies and you get your score at the end. Right. The reason I kind of gravitate towards the coaster idea is because there would definitely be barrel rolls in it. Yeah. So <laughs> you'd have you'd have uh, um, Tappy tell you that you're going to do a barrel roll, and then you do a barrel roll, and I think um, you know that'd be pretty great. Yeah. No, I, I would definitely. I, I definitely think that makes sense. Going um, going back to Kirby, um, I, I think that like any sort of kids area would be great with Kirby. You could have a lot of smaller kid rides with it. You know, the sort of Dumbo up and down rides, teacups. Yeah, those sort of things I think all fit uh, Kirby very well because that's kind of the whole thing behind Kirby, right? He's he's it's simplest design. It's fun for all ages. I mean, you could have a giant epic Kirby ride, but I don't no really one see that as happening. Wants that. Um, I mean, okay. Some people do. And I'm sorry if I disparage your, uh, uh, your preference. I will say as someone who is super terrified of roller coasters, that hanging out in a kid's area with a bunch of Kirby stuff is more fun than hanging Preferable. out in a kid's area with stuff that isn't Kirby. Yes. Agreed. <laughs> let's, let's finish up, uh, the Mario sub series. So, um, Yoshi, I figured Yoshi should be quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. Uh, Yoshi's Island, maybe a thing where uh, an egg throwing game, maybe Yoshi Safari. <laughs> yeah. If anyone remembers that, which aside from us, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a nut, like, you know what? It would be a Yoshi's Island thing, maybe in an undulating touch, fuzzy, get dizzy type of dealio that put that on a wall and that's fine. I, I don't mean to disparage Yoshi. I think he's cool. I just, yeah, I mean, the Yoshi games sell a lot. They have their own flavor to them, but it's so interconnected with Mario. And I can't think of anything in particular that I'd be like, yeah, Yoshi. I'd be like, I don't know, a merry-go-round. You can ride on Yoshi. Maybe you get to hang out with someone's annoying baby and they yell it and they whine at you. Oh man. Yeah. That'd be a very authentic theme park experience. It's pretty good. <laughs> I, I think, um, like I said, I think some kind of easy wall thing kind of, uh, that's fine for Yoshi. Um, I think Wario has a lot more potential. Like, right. Like, I'm not talking about like your crazy, super fast roller coasters or your normal ones, but like for the weird, like not sleazy, <laughs> but kind of out to the side thing for like more of your older viewers or people who like don't want to hang out with that, like very overtly charming style just go with Wario. Have like a bunch of crazy games about ripping off people at a theme park. Um, yeah, I, I mean, you can do <laughs> a lot with Wario. I mean, if you do a games area, it could definitely be yeah, um, and, Wario themed. <laughs> yeah, I think Wario and Mr. Game and Watch would be at the arcade. Right. By the way, so here's um, here's a Mario subseries that you probably didn't come to mind. Uh, doesn't come to mind to a lot of people when you think of theme parks, but is kind of perfect is luigi's mansion oh, oh god yes oh my god hey you right it's so obvious you just move with the flashlight and it's yeah like, it, you could basically just have a live action version of what you do in nintendo land hell nintendo land itself gives you a, a bunch of stuff yeah i mean you could do so much with luigi's mansion you could do um you know just a, a typical dark ride like haunted mansion style um, you could add a lot more with uh, with the flashlight. It just it, it, it makes sense to straight up have a ride called Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> yeah, Luigi's Mansion is a fantastic sub series. And I think there's so much that like you could just easily do or use. Um, I, I know that you were talking about the ride and I was talking about more of like the house where you go through like a game. But I think that right. that kind of like game and maze in escape room because they're doing a Zelda escape room on their own. But right. Like, I feel like so much, so many Nintendo games are fundamentally about, like, exploration and movement. And so to add that to a theme park, I think it would be really smart to have an environment or more environments that are really get into that. So, like, a Zelda dungeon or a Metroid-like cave where you're kind of, like, going around and searching for the Metroid or you go through the dungeon and you pick up the item and you fight the boss, like... Like here's, think that here's the problem that I have with a lot of this because, uh, OK, uh, for instance, I was listening to uh, Game Explained did a discussion uh, about this and they're talking about they brought up the escape rooms and why don't you just have an escape room? And the problem is logistics. Yeah, they take because you're thinking of it. At, you're thinking of it as a video game fan and not as um, somebody who's running a theme park or even, you know, as a theme park uh, aficionado, because 
rides have to have a certain capacity. Yeah, and they have to so be you have very to push. quick. Yeah, if you can push 100 people through a ride in an hour, that's pretty good. Because you know, there's huge lines at these places and you, you have to make sure that you get enough people through. That's why, you know, most theme park rides, you know, are three three minutes to six minutes. It's not, you know, it's just because you, you have to keep it going. Um and if you had something that was like if you ever go to like big haunted houses like uh those take uh, a while. Hollow Scream or Halloween Horror Nights, yeah, they take a while and they have people that push you through because you have to keep going. Um, because they need people to get through there. Cause when you have those lines, you have like an hour line for somebody to walk through a house. You have to make sure that the people that are there, uh, go through quickly enough. So while I understand what you're saying and something like escape rooms would be awesome on escape room. If you've ever done one, I, I think it's typically 60 minutes, right? Yeah. Um, it's I'm, yeah, hour, cause I, I've, I I've done a few before. Um, I think that I'm not, I don't want, I wouldn't say then something that big, but I do think we should have like an environment that best that does get at that and one that won't necessarily have as much foot traffic or wouldn't be as expected to have as much foot traffic. Right. Um, and, and yeah, it, it's, it's a thing too, because I agree with you that you need those kind of element elements that, that kind of make it Nintendo of exploring and, and interacting and, and doing things. And it, it can't just be, you know, or it shouldn't just be going on rides. regular theme park experiences. Yeah. That are just skinned with Nintendo. like, I think the excitement that people have, for the idea of a Nintendo theme park ride isn't just like, or maybe for people to a certain extent, it's let's see my favorite things in this one context. But I think there is an excitement that people would have and perhaps do still have for like something that actually reflects the experience they had in this one environment and medium and is able to transplant that to another one. And I think this is maybe where like the fundamental problem of the whole endeavor is that you can't necessarily do that quite so much. But if you do have an area that's maybe sort of off a little bit to the side that isn't as big as a normal escape room, that's just sort of like yeah. an environment you explore, I think that's a little bit easier right. to sell. Right, I mean, because the escape rooms themselves, if they did something like that, would have to be a premium experience that you pay extra for. Yeah. It, it just, like I said, the logistics of it, like when you really think about it, it just, it, it just doesn't work as cool as the idea of it is um okay so funny or uh dumb uh name a uh, hot dog stand called uh nintendogs oh that's obvious yeah uh, okay I, I yeah, no, that's a <laughs> perfect idea um yeah i mean every food would have to be like actually now that i think about it every single food probably could have a nintendo appropriate pun or reference like think of exactly like think of all the foods you get in Kirby and Smash and Earthbound and Pokemon. Right. That's that, that's what I, I was kind you of could getting buy at. Is that lava cookies? Like you could just buy lava cookie the lava cookies from Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. Right. It, 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 that's that's what I'm saying is that you have to realize that just because um, your favorite franchise might not get a ride doesn't mean that it won't have it can't have plenty of actual representation somewhere in inside a theme park or such as this now having said um, that speak- while i know that the pokemon company has these sort of like onerous <laughs> rules i think a poke something from pokemon really should be in there considering it okay i have i have the best idea um i have the best idea but first <laughs> tell me what you're thinking of pokemon <laughs> you know honestly i literally had like a list of things and i literally just wrote pokemon because i figured <laughs> whatever right like you could do a pokemon ride that would be popular you could have a pokemon environment where you like like one of those like kids areas where you get to explore stuff and maybe every there's like tons of pokemon and Maybe you try to like find where each of the Pokemon are, and uh, but okay. Yeah. So this is this is my idea. So um, have you ever been on like I, like I brought up before, like Men in Black and and Buzz Lightyear and uh, no. those sort of rides where okay, so you're in kind of a half cup type ride in a um, on a on a rail, and you go through an environment and it turns you around, and normally you, you have to like in Men in Black you shoot aliens, right? Yeah. I guess. And your score goes up while you do it. Like, do, do you get the general idea of what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. You're going around an environment. You, you know, there's animatronics, there's videos, there's other things, and you, you have to shoot aliens. So basically you have uh, a ride like that where you're going through and Pokemon pop up, right? And you see Pokemon everywhere. And it's like a Pokemon Safari, but it's Pokemon Snap. Yeah. And everyone has cameras and you're trying to take the best pictures to compete with everybody else on on the Pokemon snap ride. And at the end you get to see who has the highest score and you know, you 
get to be, I don't know, you're in a badge or something. Yeah, but uh, maybe you could have all the Kanto badges. Right, exactly. So um, I, I think that would be awesome because it would go around. It'd be something that, you know, young kids can do. It's not going to be scary. Yeah. It's just Pokemon. And plus you have um, there's, like a variety of environments you could do. Like you could go like, here's the beach area. You make a turn and suddenly you're in a giant ice mountain or whatever. Right. And you have that interactive element, like I was saying before, where you're taking pictures and there's also a competitive element to it. So it's very much, you know, kind of like gaming. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I think that's absolutely a great idea and a great way to reference something that people like, even if it's not a huge, like, there isn't necessarily a lot of nostalgia for Pokemon Snap, even though it's a good game that people justifiably liked. But there is, I think, like, you don't need to sell it as Pokemon Snap, you sell it as Pokemon. And that alone is, like, useful. Um... But I think also just, like, having, like, Pikachu and Charmander kind of walking around, like, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you'd see Pikachu everywhere. You'd have, uh, I mean, that's another thing where where I'm sure Pokemon would get a big thing. But Pokemon's definitely a marquee attraction. Yeah, um, I feel like if you're going to do, like, the fundamental ones are Mario, Zelda, and Pokemon. Speaking of which, you realize we've done almost 30 minutes of this without actually bringing up Zelda well, yet? other than my <laughs> idea of the, like, the maze stuff. But I do think that yeah, some yeah. kind of exploratory element would be nice. Although another one of the uh, interactive rides is also an obvious choice. Um, I think Zelda actually could work as a stage show. Because it's another thing that you see in these, uh, in theme parks is, you know, not just rides, but shows. Um, you know, you go, there's a show every hour, every whatever. Um, you have Link, you have Zelda, you have Sheik, people go, there's stunts, there's, you know, some laughs, some cheap stuff. Um, the the only thing is that um, Zelda's not, you know, Link's not really known for his dialogue, but that could be a, a joke as part of the show, you too. You could have other I just characters feel, show up, all your favorite Zelda characters. Right. Um, I, I just, I don't know, I feel like Zelda... Um, you need a big enough franchise to to kind of push the show, and I feel like Zelda's the only one that like works. Have it's the only one where people yeah. care about the big dramatic stories or the all the powerful mythology. And yeah, it, it, I think right, like no one, and it's easier to do sword fighting than it is to do Samus. Yeah, like no one <laughs> wants to care about like whether or not I, I, you know, no matter what franchise I'm going to use as a bad choice for a stage show, it's going to come off insulting. Um, but I'll say like. No one's going to care about, like, it's a Splatoon stage show or an Ice right. Climber stage show. Also, just as he, easy. It's one that's more analogous to Zelda yeah. is no one's going to care about a Fire Emblem stage show. And I love Fire Emblem, and I think that's very interesting characters. And I think— And it could work like that, but— I think, actually, uh, you, know. you could probably do something with Fire Emblem. Not a lot, but it's kind of becoming a big thing. Like— Oh, it is. Like— I don't think it would be crazy to see a Fire Emblem thing. I just don't know what that would be. Uh, as the expert on, <laughs> have... uh, as the big expert between the two of us on both theme parks and Fire Emblem, I think you're going to have to take some ideas. <laughs> I don't, you know, I'm honestly not a huge Fire Emblem uh, fan. It would have uh, <laughs> behooved us to maybe get somebody who was <laughs> to, to talk about this. Um, I've only played, um, what is it? I guess Shadow Dragon, the the remake with Marth. Um, Radiant Dawn and Awakening. I played about um, half. I played like a fourth of Awakening. Um, <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I do think that. But there are like other like smaller stuff that kind of happens in the background of a lot of these, right? Like I could, I could, I could totally see Marth uh, as a, as like an actual like face character, like Prince, like come take your picture with Prince Marth. Yeah, I could totally see that. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I mean. You know, I said it wasn't big enough for a show, but something with sword fighting and a stunt show would kind of fit Fire Emblem. I think Fire Emblem's more, more one of those things that that might have shops or a couple characters here or there, or yeah. you know, uh, you know, a a place where you can buy replica weapons. You go to like a weapon I shop, mean, absolutely, and, like and a giant kind of crappy rubber like Falchion or <laughs> Yama or Yato blade, yeah. You know, they could actually uh, keep higher end stuff there and also sell stuff from other Nintendo franchises like uh, Zelda, for instance. And it, it, But it could be Fire Emblem themed where it's it's an armor shop where you go in and buy collectibles and then also buy, you know, cheap, cheap uh, plastic swords and stuff for kids. I would totally go with that cheap plastic sword. Um, <laughs> um, that's also like one of those smaller things I think would also be fun for a lot of other Nintendo franchises like, OK, Earthbound isn't going to get a lot, if at all. 
but like a tiny little earthbound stand where you get like the buy something or or like the like the drugstore. The drugstore. Yes. The drugstore by itself would be would be great. And like humor esque of a little dog's playing uh when you uh when you actually walk in. Is that the name of that? I probably butchered the name of that song, right? Yeah. Um <laughs> no, I was saying buy something will you, which is I think from Zelda One when although they have something very similar to uh in the earthbound games but yeah um no that that is the that is the name of the song i was right humor of a little dog when you go into the yeah. the drugstore in uh in yeah. yep uh i love that, that song. is i it. was so sad they cut it uh, um from roll <laughs> or cut it from 3ds and we and for yeah i i know i i shed a tear as well um yeah i, I think earthbound is definitely something that can do that you know Maybe you can have some earthbound batting cages. I don't know. I'm just saying things now. Yeah. Um, I do think for like some of the retro stuff, really emphasize like the retro stuff in an arcade, like have a Donkey Kong background, have Mr. Game and Watch like show up to introduce you to stuff, have a Wario face character. I'm counting Wario's retro because his games are heavily based even more than most Nintendo franchises on nostalgia. Okay, I have, I have a question. So um, what would you theme and actual games area after where you go to you know a lot of parks have that theme parks have that kind of um kind of you know fair ground style area where you have you know knock the bottle over and uh you know those sort of things throw a ball in a hoop and you win a, a bear like i said warrior wear with like references to game and watch to duck hunt like the shoot the ball yeah. is obviously oh duck yeah they duck hunt yeah you have the ducks go back and forth like you'd literally have a duck hunt that yeah that makes um that makes a scary amount of sense i think having some kind of like ice climber themed one where like maybe there's different levels also um for another ride i know we're kind of on this but like there's a lot of series that would really do well with those kind of interactive rides one really big one being kid icarus Mm -hmm. kid icarus would be um i feel just a bit too small not an No, like, okay, yeah, I mean, as far as franchises go, but I think Kid Icarus would be a great ride, like, in the vein of Soren uh, at Disney, where you're kind of hanging around and you get to actually go around and follow Pit, and Palutena gives you the, uh, the, the, what is it, the power of flight? Is that what what she calls it in the game? Um, Is is she use the word power? Uh, She calls it the power of flight. Okay. Um, Where Palutena actually gives you that, and you actually follow Pit around on his adventures, and, you know, you're right behind Pitt and Pitt's like, you know, turns around it's like, oh, you know, I'm saying funny things because I'm Pitt. I'm, I'm not Pitt. I'm not as funny as he is. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Wet, but it's yeah, you know, or right. Or um, the the main Harry Potter ride at Universal is is kind of like that. Actually, you follow Harry around on his broom and it, it, it it's um, I don't know how I describe the ride system. You're kind of on a chair that's on a mechanical arm and it kind of swings you around from a uh, ride scene to ride scene. But Typically, basically, you're following Harry around. This is literally what you do in Kid Icarus Uprising. I'm just saying. Right, exactly. So it would be just like that, except you're following Pitt and you there's Fer- uh, Viridi and Hades and, and whatever. And I know Kid Icarus might not be a big enough franchise to warrant such a giant ride, but it works for that type of ride better than almost any other Nintendo franchise. Yeah, like it's pretty much perfect. And honestly, Nintendo really should be like pushing that as a series because it's a that game is a damn good one. Yeah. Speaking of um, franchises that aren't big enough to carry anything, uh, Xenoblade, I feel like, has such great locales yeah. and uh, atmosphere and it'd be great to see, but I can't really see it being much of anything. I think, and I guess... Can I make one idea? And again, I don't know sure. that much about theme parks certainly far less than you but like you know how each area is like kind of its own thing and how you kind of the parks are organized in a way that allows you to go at it at your own pace and direction but you usually kind of end up at certain areas before or after right yeah it's designed with kind of a flow in mind to get people to go a certain way but you're able to spend as much time or really uh, tackle it in different orders it's just it's definitely trying to corral you you know what i mean the reason why i'm saying bringing this up is i think if you want an area to conclude something dramatically, like the conclude the traditional walking through the thing, Xenoblade, just have the image of the Makanas. And- yeah, that was the other thing is that I feel like um, Xenoblade Chronicles X would make more sense if you actually did a ride, uh, not just because it's newer, but because uh, Planet Mira is easier to kind of explore and you can actually get on one of the dolls and be in a mech or something like that. This is my uh, absolute bias showing through because I vastly preferred Xenoblade to Xenoblade X. I that's what I was going to say. And it's also the more iconic one. People 
know, I mean, neither of them are that iconic. They're not that huge of a series, but, but people enjoy Shulk and people enjoy that world and people enjoy the things from that world. I think in general, not everybody yeah. more. And I'd love to see it, but I'm just it's saying also just more it interesting. Like it feels more, I don't want to say Nintendo y, but like it feels more like its own thing that's also part of this company's larger history than X, which just look, X has good ideas, and I enjoyed what of it I played, and I'll try to get back into it, but like it's a pretty bland game. Compared. Right, that was a game where they 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 tried to do everything except, and then they kind of forgot the the, the driving part of yeah of Xenoblade was that the story um you know subverted some tropes but for the most part was was pretty standard JRPG fare. It's a classic uh, the story. Was the char- it's a it's a in some yeah. ways it's a very cliched story, but it's told well with a likable small cast of characters who go through an that interesting was the story. Thing. I think it's really telling that the cast of Chrono Trigger and the cast of Xenoblade Chronicles has the exact same number of playable characters because that's a small crew and they go through the story with these recurring villains and side characters. And eventually they, you know, learn to grow and become part of a team. That's literally the game, how the gameplay works. Uh, anyway, uh, (laughs) I have no idea where <laughs> how we go back on track other where, than to say where, now it's time right. to go back well, on track. Well, I, I mean, I guess we could say that Xenoblade, uh, we, I, I think both of us would prefer something from the first game. I think logistically the second game would make for a more cohesive ride in both experience. But in both cases, I think we would agree that the Monado should be sold in that cheap, crappy sword store. Exactly. And that... Um, that there should definitely be a hero pond Ricky somewhere in the park that you can interact with. <laughs> Man, I, I feel so bad for any person who's going to ha- who may potentially wear that Ricky costume. <laughs> I almost think that Ricky would be more of like an animatronic standing somewhere in the middle of something that people can interact with. Okay. Yeah. Like they might, they might, they, cause they, they do that in parks where, you know, you probably have somebody out of sight that's on a mic that will actually talk, do the stupid Ricky voice through the, uh, didn't they have Charles <laughs> Martin that in that like an, that show, and that's how he got yeah. the Super Mario sixty four thing or job? Ex- exactly. So it'll be something very similar to that, except with an actual kind of functioning animatronic that talks to kids and stuff as they as they walk by. He can even tell you the story of uh, of Xenoblade Chronicles. I also want to, you know, through the, through the lens of the hero pod. <laughs> oh, that's uh, good. Uh, I also just yeah. want to bring up that this animatronic idea you can do for so many different characters. Midna for one. Yeah. Uh, the lack of two. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Zelda, Zelda is something that much like Mario, we could spend time talking about every z- different type of ride. Cause just a standard dark ride makes sense for, for Zelda too. Yeah. But uh, there's so much more, not as much. Yeah. Because you'd like to go and see Hyrule. But the reason I think a, a show or an explorable area works more is because I don't know, just following link around doesn't feel organic. You know what I mean? But here's yeah. Because the fundamental part of Zelda is comes from two things. Exploration. And also this larger mythology, like the iconography, the like the recurring story of Link fighting the villain Ganon. It's this like deconstructing it, reconstructing it, pastiching it, focusing on individual details and small snippets. That has been literally the focus of Zelda, as is this idea of exploring, particularly exploring these vast wilds and weird creeping dungeons like that's a fundamental part of it. It's like, you can't separate, you cannot do Zelda without acknowledging these ideas. And I don't think, yeah, I just think there's a, a straight like ride where you're just going in and, you know, seeing different parts of Hyrule and sitting in a vehicle, which I couldn't even imagine what the vehicle would be. I mean, I'm sure if I thought about it long enough, I could think of something, but it, it just, yeah, it wouldn't feel like a real Zelda experience. It would just be like, you know it's like? It's a difference between, uh, playing Zelda and watching one of your friends play Zelda. Yeah. One's a lot more fun than the other. <laughs> well, yeah. And of course, if you're just watching, you still get that iconography. But again, you don't really do that that well with a ride. I think the stage show, right. like, there's no other series that would do as well with stage show and no other stage show that would like work. Uh, maybe Fire Emblem. But. Yeah, Fire Emblem, I think, could work in a lot of ways. But I don't know. I think I think if I had more of a background in Fire Emblem, maybe I could think of, of how it would or wouldn't work, but I, I don't. <laughs> well, I think, you know, we always talk about, like, these older franchises, and, of course, Nintendo is steeped in this older history. Also, by the way, have some Hanafuda playing cards. Right. 
But also, I think it's important for Nintendo to reference a lot of its newer stuff and not just be seen as this kind of older company. And a big one is Splatoon. Right. I think Splatoon, um, you know, I kind of brought up that Pokemon Snap idea. I think a more traditional kind of um, version of that where you're in a a cart and you're being uh, drug drug all around, you know, uh, Inkopolis to the different places. um, And and you're actually going around shooting on that ride would would be very cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you have... Other than Duck Hunt and maybe Metroid and maybe Star Fox, Splatoon, any kind of shooting system or shooting game should use Splatoon. Right. Um, Because, okay, so uh, another one kind of like that there, it's called um, Toy Story Midway Mania um, at Disney's Hollywood Studios is another one where you're in a ride vehicle and you go around uh, shooting stuff, but the actual things you shoot are on screens. So you could have a cart where you go around and you could actually have animatronics and uh, a lot of real things as well. But a lot of the parts where you shoot could actually be screens and you could actually have uh, people in other carts do different ink colors. So you could actually be trying to finish stuff off and it could actually, you know, go uh, into just like kind of a friendly thing or a tour of uh, Inkopolis and the different areas um, that you, the different maps basically, but it ends up being that you're invaded by the Octoling army and then you have to, you know, take your guns and, uh, and help the uh, Inklings out. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think that's a, I mean, Splatoon, we've gone over on the site so many times about how successful it is <laughs> and how it's seen as this like possible new future for Nintendo. And I think it would need to, be there in some fashion and not to mention you have any fish dish should probably, or most of them <laughs> like should reference Splatoon in some fashion. What about a Callie and Marie uh, show? Ooh, yeah, that's good. Or, Actually, now that yeah, I think about like it, a, there's a lot of musical acts they could do. Um, Wari- all the Wario yeah. characters, uh, KK slider. Yeah. You could have like an old Zelda style performance where like someone's on a lute. <laughs> you could have an entire kind of show. Uh, at like, show at night like a entire music a uh, little faux concert that they put on yeah i know it's there's so many like i think it's once we get away from like the normal rides and into this like kind of weirder more mercurial type of things that's when like the possibilities really start to come out right oh it's funny i feel like we haven't talked about um kind of traditional simulator uh rides like kind of dark rides 3d rides And we also haven't talked about uh, one major series yet, and that's Metroid. And I think Metroid fits that sort of ride pretty well. Like if you do kind of the Spider-Man ride where you're you're going around, maybe you're um, a Federation uh, recruit. And then you see Samus like fighting Metroid and fighting Ridley. And right. Exactly. It's like you see her kind of just showing up a little bit, a little bit, and then more. And then it's you know very dramatic and exciting. Right, and then you're being attacked by Ridley. And then, yeah. In the end, so, you all win. Yeah, in the end, uh, in the end, they play the Metroid music. The, you you go, and everyone had a good time. It, they'll almost certainly, if that exists, the music won't actually be different. It'll literally just be that music from the end of Metroid Prime 3. <laughs> um, yeah, but I feel like Metroid fits that traditional type of ride really well. Um I know that, you know, especially because you can kind of build up to it because Metroid, part of it is kind of that whole isolationist kind of feeling and what's going on and the, yeah. the atmosphere and the mood. And you can build up to that where you have it in, in a totally functioning um, environment because, like I said, you have Federation recruit. That's just, you know, whatever uh, whatever MacGuffin they throw at you to make it that you're actually on the ride, right? Yeah. But, um, Sorry, this is just a part that I think we should talk about to uh – bring up because i know a lot of metroid fans especially in this around the smash community feel a little bit salty about the idea of metroid equaling caverns but metroid is literally about exploring caverns and i love metroid i'm not trying to reduce it but that exploration that constant like movement that's like that's what the series is and i do think that something that's a little darker because Unless we're willing to discuss Eternal Darkness, and realistically, that's almost impossible, like, just on a legal basis. Uh, Metroid is their big, darker series. Like, that's... And it's fun, though. It's a fun kind of darkness. A family-friendly kind, where maybe the monsters are scary, but they're also kind of these toothy, teething jellyfish, or a guy who's more dragon than xenomorph. 
Right, and it's you know, and even when you're bringing up xenomorphs, it's more aliens than it is alien. Although, although the, the alien kind is of the, scary too. Like, I mean, alien right. well, is scary, alien, sc- much scarier. But like, aliens is a horror movie and an action movie. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, there's more. There, there's definitely that action element of it because you know, unlike Sigourney Weaver, I mean, I, Samus is equipped to handle whatever comes at her. Yeah, she is. I'm not, not, not taking away anything from Sigourney as an action star or action hero, by the way. Right. But part of that is the fact that she's, you know, human and, you know, she's got a flamethrower. She's kind of a badass, but she's not, you know, some sort of superhuman uh, Chozo warrior in a suit of a uh, futuristic armor. There's- I mean, her smartest, th- her best like thing isn't the fact that she has weapons. It's the fact that she is smart and not Paul Reiser. Right. Exactly. And Samus is, let's face it, a superhero. She's basically Iron Man. But that's why we put you as a recruit into areas where it would be terrifying for you. And then Samus has to kind of come and save you. <laughs> it's also a nice way to play with because Metroid. Look, I I don't want to, again, like say anything about anything, but Metroid really is a much more minor series in Nintendo history. Like it's important. And right. It has a historical relevance and it has just the fact that almost all of its games are some of the best games in that company's history. Right. It's a tier two franchise, yeah, though. Um, and maybe even tier three, if you consider Mario and Pokemon tier one. No, I, I mean, <laughs> Just Mario I would say Pokemon. tier two, if only because like any Nintendo crossover has to have Metroid or realistically. It, right. It, like I, I love Metroid, but Super Metroid uh, might be my favorite game of all time. It's definitely top five. I mean, yeah, Met- um, Super I love Metroid, Metroid Prime and Metroid Prime in particular to me are like the two of the, just the absolute best things that company has made. And but it, again, it's like um, a more distant series. And this can actually work in its favor because having Samus, who is a lot less of a knowable character, like I think Other M was basically just made as a way to like have a game about a personal journey for Samus that was like more explicit. Having her kind of work in this more like off to the side fashion, I think actually works in a way for this kind of scarier, cool action ride. Like, I don't think you could do that for Link because Link isn't wearing a full body suit of armor that makes him look, that is so like completely cuts off whatever overt humanity he actually has. Right. And, you know, I I just feel like it's, I don't know why, but it just doesn't make as much sense for me to be following Link throughout Hyrule as it does to like follow Pit. Following Pit, like with um, Palutena, like, Right, exactly. With Palutena, like, tongue-in-cheek, just giving you a, a free ride to see what's going on, uh, makes a lot of sense. Being somebody in Samus's world that has to be rescued by Samus makes sense. Being somebody in Hyrule that's not Link, maybe it's because Link is such an avatar, that you not being Link seems weird. Yeah, I think that's a big part of it, is that, like, even more than the other Nintendo franchise characters, like, again, Samus or Mario or Kirby or anyone else, Link... I don't want to say he has no personality, but it's the fact that there... He's you, though. Yeah, and even the games where he has a personality, it's still limited by the fact that those are the links of one game. Like, the Link of Wind Waker is the one with the most personality and character, and he's, what, gone gone after two games. That might be the one that I I see as uh, being the Zelda that would make most sense as a ride, by the way, is Wind Waker. Oh yeah, definitely. Maybe you could actually be on the King of Red Lions and it could be a quasi water ride. I definitely think that um, doing more water stuff is definitely good for all the hatred that water levels get in gaming uh, culture and especially Nintendo water levels. This is definitely a good time for them to shine. I mean, you've got, yeah, the King of Red Lions ride, a barrel ride. I don't even know. Like, are there sometimes like water parks too? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's definitely that. Um, I mean, there's all sorts of, of rides. I mean, there's also the the plunge rides, like your your Tower of Terror type deals or Doctor Doom's Free Fall sort of thing. There's there's a lot of different things you can do with rides. Um, what do you and, think and, of for your like sudden plunge rides? What Nintendo franchise do you think does that? I don't know. Ice climbers. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like ice climbers know. are another one of those retro franchises that should get definitely some representation. Maybe like a face But nothing character. that large. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But nothing. It'd be pretty great if there was an eggplant, like Nana and Popo's eggplant dish. Yeah, I could I could totally see an entire ride that's somehow based off of EGAD. I don't even know, but just you're testing out something. EGAD is definitely one of the Nintendo characters who has a person who has the most like theme park 
idealized personality. Like, yeah, right? hey guys, I've come up with this cool new science roller coaster. Can you help me test it? And then it turns out that there's <laughs> King Boo and you have to like shoot him or whatever and, and you get a prize. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, we could always tie that into uh, Luigi's Mansion. Like, you need to test out his new poltergust because Luigi's not around. Yeah, because Luigi's on the other uh, side of the maze where he's hanging out by the Donkey Kong barrel thing. Also, pipes. Like, if you're going, at least one entrance and exit should be a pipe. Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I could, you know, we we're talking about Fire Emblem before. I could see Fire Emblem being more of an actual ride. It's just, or maybe, maybe a 3D movie. I think, yeah, I think here's the problem that I have is that Fire Emblem is really based around its characters, almost like monomaniacally. Right. Like it's and, literally like. And it's, and it's big battles. So maybe something like a 3D movie. Yeah. Would work best for that, where you kind of sit down and, you know, they have the whole 4D thing where <laughs> yeah. you you sit down and things shake and it's a 3D movie. But if there's water, then water splashes you and if things are burning, you smell fire, um, you know, or Wario could also have one of those. And then Wario farts and it smells like Wario farts. <laughs> that's gonna happen. They just have someone who just like ate nothing but garlic and <laughs> tried to capture the smell of that somehow. Yeah, we got it. We got it, right? Um, um, I mean, is there anything else? Because, yeah, and you know, going back to Zelda, the thing is, you think of dungeons, right? No. But that would have to be, it, it, it just, it, I, I don't feel like it works best as a ride. Yeah, I, I think the problem also is just Zelda, not as much as Metroid, but is just such a, ex, like, I, I keep going back to this, but it's like such a series that even when it's linear, it disguise, it tries to disguise its linearity. Right. Um, all right. So, I mean, I think we talked about all of the big ones. Um, is there any other franchises you wanted to bring up or any other ride types you'd want to bring up? I think if we're talking about like more lesser like things, there's so many like racing series. I think, uh, Excite Bike would Ooh, be Pilot fun. Wings. What? I, I, sorry. Sorry. I just completely forgot Pilot Wings was a thing till now. Maybe that could be the drop ride. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Yes. Oh, oh man. That's a great <laughs> idea. Um, Pilot. Yeah. Pilot Wings for the drop ride. Maybe like. I feel like Excite Bike would be kind of fun in some fashion. And just yeah. like Animal Crossing, that would be like a thing where it's based around the idea that every day it's a little different. So it entices you to um, come back and buy more pl- cheap plastic Monados and Master Swords. Uh, I really want something for Punch Out. I don't know what would actually work for Punch Out. Could there be like just kind of like one tiny show where Little Mac beats up some vaguely ethnic or cultural <laughs> stereotype? Uh, maybe. Can we can we have like a like a little class the Glass Joe's uh, cafe yeah too where you get uh, some some nice French food uh, oh man I have not had French food for too long I could would definitely want to go to Glass Joe's cafe that would be actually really funny to do like an international cafe like run by like Doc Lewis like he retired and he opened up this restaurant and each and it's just uh like international food each one is um, named themed after, after. yeah. Honestly, it would not even be any more like culturally insensitive than any other <laughs> international cafe of any other ride ever made. Right, exactly. Um, um, and yeah, I think Punch Out definitely would be really fun. I feel like those kind of lesser shows, like if Zelda's the big stage show, you could have like tiny little lesser shows too, right? Oh, um, okay. I was about to say, and then who are we going to do for ice cream? That's where ice climbers go. Yeah. Clearly the ice cream restaurant or ice cream stand is ice climbers thing. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Done. <laughs> we, we got that figured out. I love out. how we really just <laughs> spent this. Really, we spent most of this entire time just trying to think of things for the ice climbers to do. We're still sad, guys. And you know what? You know what will not be in this theme park? Wolf. Ha ha ha. Yes, actually, <laughs> I don't care about Wolf. <laughs> and um, no, he'll be in the Star Fox ride. Yes. I, I like I said, I like Star Fox as a coaster. F Zero is a coaster we brought up. Star Fox also kind of works as one of those, you know, in a box kind of motion rides like Star Tours. Clearly, if they made a Star Wars ride, yeah. I'm feeling like other franchises. You think the? I feel like the Wii, like the whole Wii brand, has to be in there in some fashion. I don't know. Right. Well, I mean, there'd be Woohoo Island in some form, I'm sure. Yeah. Um. Because I feel like that's such an important part of Nintendo history, and especially their cur- like the way they are currently known in the culture. That even if it's not important now, it still was important and probably should be referenced. Um, right. I think definitely having a variety of visual styles is probably the big selling point to something like this. So, like, you could have, like, the traditional kind of 
vaguely plasticine Mario style or the more like construction heavy Paper Mario style or the more pastel y like uh impressionist Yoshi's Island style or the more like crappy pixelated early rare Super Nintendo Donkey Kong Country style. Right. Also a um some kind of uh, at least one Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze themed thing, maybe like a frozen banana daiquiri. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, I have a feeling that when all when all is said and done, if you see a Nintendo theme park, that's what a lot of these things are 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 going to end up being. Yeah. You know, uh, they're going to end up being. You know, it, it, it's sad to say, but even Kid Icarus might be a uh, a stand that sells euros or something. I would totally <laughs> go with that. I mean, honestly. The way I basically approach a theme park is just in its food. Like, I don't really care right. about the rides <laughs> or the shows. Well, I, 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 I just I approach a theme park for the theming, because if not, I'd go to an amusement park. And I, I enjoy all of that that goes along with it. You know, and uh, I, I mean, I think it's you could you could make we could make an entire theme park based off of Earthbound or Hell electroplankton i don't i actually think an (laughs) electroplankton would be pretty fun for like you know what no no i got it one room at night the lights all get kind (laughs) of crazy and then it's like electroplankton visual themed actually that'd be kind of cool like splat like the way the splat fest look at night like having that for yeah some rooms look like that for the night for when it gets to evenings and, well, I'm telling you, there's I, I, I see it as kind of a night show, maybe fireworks, maybe not. I don't know. But there'll probably be a big show that involves um, Callie and Marie and all sorts of stuff like that. Lunala shows up in the sky. Yeah, exactly. You know, you have. Hey, look, it's that's Majora. Whoa, it's Majora's. Um, I uh, actually <laughs> totally there's a part of me. OK, since we're going to just go into like the super insane, exorbitant and or implausible ones, I totally want like a story where you have the skull kid who's like going around the park, certain par- parts of the park per day. And at the end of the night, he tries to blow up the park with the moon and then Link stops him. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. Cause you can also have characters running around. I mean, you could have uh, I don't know, like anybody, like uh, I think Chibi Robo. Oh God. Yes. Cool Chibi stuff. Robo. Um, yeah. And also just going on that skull kid idea. If I know that, that like people who wanted those Nintendo movies are probably hoping for like some kind of Nintendo cinematic universe. Boom. There you go. Everyone fights the skull kid. Um, (laughs) very nice. The, um, what are those other like weird franchises? You know, the wonderful one Oh one. Right. I mean, those are literally characters who almost look like they were designed to be like mascots at an amusement park. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of them, you know, even you brought up uh, Eternal Darkness. That's definitely one that has no chance of anything, but can make a really atmospheric, you know, kind of cool ride. Yeah. Uh, Star Tropics would be a lot of fun. Oh, um, man. Yeah, Star Tropics. Uh, um, also, any of the eShop games, Pushmo. Yeah. Like, I, I like oh, just man. a big Pushmo and Playground. <laughs> Oh, definitely. Like you get these big blocks that sort of move a little bit and then people try to like move on them. It's like not so dangerous for them, but you still get the sense that you're going around a big thing. Um, I also like uh, Rob have a big like giant robot just walk around and dispense gifts. Um. (laughs) Like he (laughs) moves his arms and then he gets you like basically a gift that is ultimately just like a crappy, not really that useful coupon to the store to a store that sells overpriced stuff already. Right. Where we can buy our plastic Minados. And I think that ties us uh, back together because I think this has gone on uh, (laughs) a little longer than we initially planned. Yeah, this was Um, just planned as like a 30 minute thing. And I don't think that's bad at all. (laughs) Now, talking about Nintendo theme parks is fun, though. Um, I'm sure everyone out there is going to be talking to their friends about it. Uh, you know, just brainstorm and, and see what is there and what could possibly be there. And it's I don't know, it's 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 definitely a fun thought experiment. <laughs> I think the thing it's going back to something I said earlier. The thing that is exciting about this idea is less about the branding, because realistically, you could have branding for essentially anything and put it into a theme park ride. You could have a Life is Strange themed theme park. You could have a Roadhouse right. themed theme park, which I would go to every day of my life because Roadhouse is my favorite film of all time. You could have ones based on the works of John luc Godard. It, what makes the Nintendo one exciting is that it's is that Nintendo has this history of interactivity. Like their history is in many respects, a lot of the history of game design and gaming history. And 
the appeal of something that's more interactive, of taking that experience and putting it into real life is compelling. Agreed. Agreed. Um, and that's, yeah, I, I think that's the thing that we ought to look forward to. And, you know, you see that in Nintendo's areas. Uh, when I was at E3 this year, just looking at how amazing the Zelda experience was for Breath of the Wild made me excited for the possibility of a Nintendo theme park. Yeah, that because I only saw it from like those the pictures, but it looked so cool. And it's not even a big thing. It's just like it's just a small area. But imagine that. But like where every new place you turn could be a new franchise, a new visual style. Yep. And that I think is what we're, we're all hoping for. All right, guys, um, I hope that you have enjoyed our uh, discussion here today. You can. Uh, is there anything in particular you want to plug Wolfman? Anything you've been doing <laughs> um, on a few podcasts, some related to here, some not. Uh, I guess we could put the links in on our site, sourcegaming.com or is it sourcegaming.info? Sourcegaming dot, dot, dot info. Oh, oh God, that's off. No, yeah, it's sourcegaming.info. Um, so yeah, so just, you can get us uh, at sourcegaming.info. Um, I am spazzy, um, 8-bit underscore spazzy. If you want to follow me on Twitter, um, once again, just go to sourcegaming.info. Follow, um, you know, like, subscribe on YouTube and uh, hope you guys enjoy this. Um, you know, like, subscribe,